Hi, and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick, and today, guys, we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at what's been going on most recently and what I think is likely to happen next. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, subscribe. And if you tap the bell, select all the notifications, you will not miss another video update. If you haven't joined us in Discord, though, you are missing a trick. Check it out. Link is in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7. It's completely free, and I don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there. So why not go ahead and check it out? Let's jump right down into today's video. What we'll do is we'll kick things off with that one hour time frame. So here we have Bitcoin paired up with USDT and uh, we are using Binance as our data source. As you can kind of see in a typical kind of weekly close fashion, we usually have this push upwards. The bulls try to close us in a stronger position um, than the bears. And they kind of fight it out a little bit. It can go either way, but typically most recently we've seen a bit of a push on the upside for the weekly close. And that's no exception here. So we had our uh, wedge pattern here uh, coming in. It's no longer really a wedge pattern. We can adjust our trend lines. One of the reasons I'm not a big fan of trend lines is it's become more of a parallel channel. In fact, I might actually take the trend lines off and throw in uh, a parallel channel. Uh, I'm going to throw you right in here and bring this down so you can kind of see. We'll just bring that across a little bit here as well. We probably have to lift that up a little bit. There we go. Um, so as you can kind of see here, we have the parallel channel, higher highs, higher lows. These do have a tendency to want to break on down. Uh, and that kind of makes sense with our five wave pattern that we have over here as well. Okay, because there are any really a handful of five wave patterns, yeah, only a handful. Um, so in this case here, we have a five wave move to the downside like this. We have an overlapping corrective pattern to the upside. You can see the overlapping nature of the candlesticks. Okay, and so I'm just going to go ahead and draw this in as like a W, X, Y, X, and Z, right? And you can see how there would be overlap with the X and the W waves as an example. And what tends to happen here is that there's a type of pattern. If you start with five waves, you have to end in five waves, meaning that if you had five waves down, you have this overlapping corrective structure to the upside here, then you have to have another five waves down. You cannot, under Elliott Wave theory, have just a random five wave pattern. Okay, they do not exist. You can't just have five waves on their own own like this. They're always a part of a bigger play, a bigger pattern. And in this particular case, this would be the technical uh, term of an A, B, C, a zigzag pattern. Okay. Um, and so we have to be aware of that. So knowing that we have that five wave structure means that we either have a type of five wave pattern, uh, such as a running flat and irregular flat, a zigzag or um, an impulsive pattern. Okay. So let's show you the kind of the bullish ideas first. The bullish ideas here uh, essentially would be that we have some kind of ABC structure to the downside. Okay. So you'd have your A, your B, and your C, and you kind of got that zigzag pattern. And this is the end of it, right? Now we know that that's not really what's going on here, uh, unless of course we take into consideration this move. But this one's already an ABC structure because we can see it down here. This pierced higher than our originating three wave move. So this is a new structure. Of course, it can be a running flat. We cannot ignore that either. So it could be a running flat situation, which would basically look like this. Uh, you'd have your A wave coming an A wave, let me grab that one, an A wave coming down, a B wave coming up, and a C wave coming down here. And a running flat situation here, you can see the C wave does not go down lower than the A wave, but the B wave does go higher than the origin. Uh, and so we could look at that being right in here as a A, B, C running flat. It's a possibility if you were to pierce higher than the swing high at 37,900 and let me find the exact number, 80, uh, then that's what you would have. You'd have this uh, running flat situation. Um, however, I don't think that's likely to be the case. So for the most part, we look at this and we say, okay, this is more than likely going to be the start position. Um, but if we do breach higher, then it becomes that running flat situation, okay? There's always a structure. This is the thing that people don't seem to understand about Elliott Wave theory. There's a structure to explain everything. It's immutable in the same way that the blockchain is. It's a case of whether or not you can identify it correctly. And it's usually the analyst that is at fault when the Elliott Wave theory Theory goes wrong. Okay, it's nothing to do with Elliott Wave theory being wrong. It's everything to do with the analyst being wrong. It's a very complicated subject and there's a lot of rules you have to remember and apply. Um, so I'm kind of giving you the probabilities here to say that I don't think that this is a running flat situation, but it absolutely can be. Um, I don't think it is, but it could be. Uh, I think for the most part, we're actually in a zigzag pattern here and we're looking for another break to the downside with our overlapping structure here. Okay, this isn't a reversal. This isn't taking us up into our fifth wave high from this area. So instead, I suspect that we are more than likely going to be looking for maybe another 
push up higher here, um, but ultimately another five wave pattern to the downside, where my expectation would be a minimum of this low at 35,500. Okay, that would then complete out our A, B, C structure. Okay, so that's the hourly. Um, nothing much has changed from the bigger picture, though. We are still aiming for 38,750 to 40,000, right? We're still up here. We're still looking for this. I just don't think we've finished this wave four yet. Okay, and I think we are in this little um, running flat situation. I mean, it could be a running flat situation from there, I guess, uh, at a push. If we took it all the way from over here, we could look at it as a running flat. That would allow you to kind of be bullish on the market. I just don't think that's really what's going on. Uh, I think we've still got this move to the downside. It's a big three wave sideways corrective pan, and we're looking to come back down towards $34,500. Once done, I think we then actually push back up into this range, and we finish the fifth wave at $38,750 to $40,000. Let's take a look at it from a daily standpoint. So the daily standpoint here, we're inside the fifth wave movement. And what I'm saying, guys, is that we have a wave one, two, three. This is is all four, we've got to go up in five, right? It's a diagonal based structure. And um, this one is called an expanding diagonal. Um, and so an expanding diagonal has a wave one. Uh, well, actually, yeah, there's two different types. Uh, let's be fair, right? We've got one that I think is going on here, which is your expanding diagonal. And then you've got the opposite of this, which would be a contracting diagonal. Okay, and it would look like this, right? And so there's two different structures. You'd have the wave one, the wave two, the wave three, the wave four, not crossing the wave two low point, and then a wave five. Okay, the only rules here are that wave four cannot cross the wave two origin, and wave three cannot be the uh, shortest wave. In the contracting, the same thing applies. Wave one is the longest wave. Wave three is not allowed to be the shortest wave. And you would find that there's no overlap between the wave four and the wave two. Okay, contracting and expanding. I think we're in an expanding diagonal pattern right in here. And that is what is taking us out towards that $40,000 on the final fifth wave movement of our daily chart, which was starting all the way down here in October. Okay, so that's my expectation on the daily time frame from an Elliott Wave Theory point of view. From a smart money concepts point of view, we're in a bullish structure. We've got our breaks of structure. All that's okay. Nothing has changed there. From a traditional elements, we've got the 200. EMA, that's the white line, the 50 EMA, that is the red line, and the 50 SMA, that is the yellow line. Everything's geared up quite nicely. We're above all of them. And so there's nothing really kind of saying that there's a problem there. I suspect that we're just looking to finish off this little structured move here. And then once done, it is complete. And we can then start talking about maybe moves down towards 30 to $31,000 to find support. Okay, so all of that is kind of there on the daily. We've got plenty of momentum on our stochastics. We can lift up, not a problem. So we are still looking for that. On our weekly time frame, obviously, we're still in our edge, uh, bearish pattern, still have the ability to push up to that 38750 and 40000 range uh, before we break on down. I am looking for a breakdown from here. Uh, we had a golden cross on the weekly time frame not that long ago. That's the 50 SMA crossing the 200 EMA. Um, again, it has not actually account accounted for anything. Uh, this is mainly because the volumes are just really, really low. Like they're, they're not existent, right? So we know the volumes of bullish markets are really nice and high. Uh, bearish markets, it's really low. And this move to the upside here is no different to the volume that was being pushed through in the bear market of 2022. Uh, volumes profiles are exactly the same here on Binance, the same on Bitstamp, where this is Bitstamp. Uh, and so it's really yeah, lackluster. It's not really showing us kind of what we want to see from this move to the upside. So this looks like a breakdown pattern. We're looking for 30 to 31,000 to find support. If we don't find support there, then we are going to be looking for a breakdown towards the um, at twenty four to twenty five thousand dollar range. If you don't find support there, twenty to twenty one thousand dollars. And if you don't find support there, well, you're in a whole lot of hot water uh, because you are going to be moving down quite aggressively at that point. What's going to be the catalyst for all of these things? Well, we've got the SEC delaying Bitcoin spot ETF. So don't be surprised if that's going to be a big catalyst. Uh, we also have a Fed pivot looming. Uh, this is something where essentially you'll see the Fed interest rates that have been increasing, actually then the Fed taking decreasing rates. Now that's a really bullish thing, but they only tend to do that when the market is at its worst possible point. Take a look at all of the history of the Fed pivots and you'll find that they coincide with big market corrections and bullish markets afterwards. And so it's a big bullish sign, but they do expect to see a bit of a crash before you actually see a lift in the value of assets. Okay. And again, this is just because liquidity has been sucked out of the market 
everyone's feeling the pinch at the hardest possible point. And unfortunately, what tends to happen is people tend to sell their assets to keep up with the Joneses or to, as I say, um, keep up with a lifestyle that they're used to. Um, so they tend to sell off assets. Okay, this tends to be more retail based than institutional based, but institutional investors are aware of these things nonetheless. So we have these two big catalysts of potential moves to the downside. Then we obviously have so many other things happening in around the world at the moment that you know, you can just kind of pick one, something is bound to, to kind of, you know, create a bit of a um, bit of an issue in the in the stock market in the crypto market and so forth. So what I'm saying, guys, is that we kind of see no real logical reason and rationale for the price to be pushing up the way that it has done. Uh, it's based on low volume. I think about the people who have everything to gain and uh, all the people who, who aren't really paying attention. I think, uh, you know, if we think back to late 2022, all the exchanges that were failing, going bankrupt, that had no liquidity, all of a sudden are flourishing. They've got plenty of liquidity. They're no longer potentially bankrupt. They're finding money down the back of the sofa. Um, and of course, you know, it's at the expense of retail investors yet again, be aware that we haven't really got the volume profiles that dictate a bullish market. A bullish market is simply as defined when demand outpaces supply. And at the moment, we aren't seeing the supply being outpaced by any demand. We're seeing an illogical move to the upside. That being said, though, it's been great. We've been able to get, make significant amounts of cash, but let's not trick ourselves into thinking that this is sustainable for the long term. I expect a pullback in the market once we finish off our structures on our daily timeframes. I'm going to leave this video right there, though, guys. If you have found it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Until the next one, though, guys, have a fantastic day.